Hi, in this video, we'll be learning about programming with images. We'll learn about how we can add images to our programs and modify their pixels to achieve really cool results. So we've seen that images are made of pixels. The question is, how can we access these pixels in our programs? How can we get it so that we have an image in our code and we can access that pixel data and manipulate it? Well, introducing WebImage. WebImage provides a JavaScript API that lets us add images to our programs and manipulate their pixels. So how can we create a web image? Well, to create a new web image, all you need to do is pass it the URL where the image exists. So for example, say we had this monkey image that existed at that URL, we can make a new variable IMG and set it to a new web image that is constructed from that URL and then add that image to our canvas. And the results would be the monkey image on our canvas in our graphics window. So it's as simple as that. That's how we can add an image to our canvas. Now, WebImage provides a lot more functionality than just adding an image to the canvas. So what is the API of WebImage? Well, there's a set position function. So we can call image.setPosition and pass it an x and y coordinate. And that will set the position of the upper left corner of the image. We can also set the size, pass it a width and height, and that will set the width and height of the image in pixels. So we can make our image very small, very big, square, rectangle, whatever we want. We can also get the width of the image and get the height. And these will return the width and height of the image in pixels. We'll return a number that represents the number of pixels. We can also access the underlying pixel data using the getPixel function. So if we call getPixel and pass an x and y coordinate, it will return the pixel at coordinates x, y as an array of three numbers, r, g, and b. So if the pixel was black, I would get an array of 0, 0, 0. And if the pixel was white, I would get an array that held 255, 255, 255. The first index is the red value, the second index is the green value, and the last index is the blue value. Now, it's important to note that the image has its own coordinate system. So the upper left corner of the image is 0, 0. If I called getPixel00, I would be getting that pixel in the upper left corner. Then we have increasing x to the right and increasing y down, just like on the graphics window. That means that the upper right corner is going to be image.getWidth for x, 0 for y. The bottom left corner is going to have a 0 value for x and image.getHeight for y. And then the bottom right corner is image.getWidth, comma, image.getHeight. So this is the coordinate system we need to work in in order to access the pixel data. So that's how we can read pixel data from an image. But what if we want to actually modify those pixels? Well, WebImage provides an API for that as well. We can call setRed, setGreen, or setBlue at a specific coordinate and pass it a value, and it will set the R, G, or B value of the pixel at X, Y to be the value that we pass in. So using this, we could set all the red in the image to be 0, or we could set all the green in the image to be 255. These are the function calls we'll use to manipulate the pixel data of our images. So using WebImage, we can easily write our own image filters and create all these cool effects with these web images. And every image filter we write is going to follow a very common format. So this is the general image filter in pseudocode. If I wanted to write a filter for an image, I would write a function filter that takes an image, and all I have to do is loop over every x, y coordinate in the image, get the current pixel at those coordinates, modify that pixel according to a function, and then update the image at x, y with this new modified pixel. This is how every image filter is going to work. This is the template or the pseudocode for every image filter. What makes them different is this part right here, modifying the pixel according to a function. So some functions might brighten the pixel, some functions might darken the pixel. All we have to do to write an image filter is write this function. So let's explore this in the editor. So the first filter I want to write is the grayscale filter. And what this will do is it will turn the image into black and white. And so, so far, all I'm doing is I'm constructing the new image, adding it to the canvas, and we have to wait for it to load before we can start modifying the pixel data. So that's what this is doing. It's just waiting for it to load, and then it will call the function black and white filter. So here's the function black and white filter. What we want to do is we want to write out the general format for an image filter. And so the steps to that are, we first want to loop over every x, y coordinate in the image. 
And inside that loop, we want to get the current pixel at x, y. We want to modify that pixel according to a function. Function and update the image at x, y with this new pixel. And that's all there is to it. So let's go ahead and implement all these steps. So to loop over every x, y coordinate in the image, I'm going to need a nested for loop. So I'm going to first loop over every x coordinate. For var x equals 0, x is less than image.get width x plus plus. So this will loop over every x coordinate of the image. But that's only doing one row. That's only doing the first layer of the image. Within this, I want to loop over every y coordinate. So for var y equals 0, y is less than image.get height y plus plus. So now, on any given iteration, x is 0, we'll go, over, we'll go over every y. Now x is 1, we'll go over every y. Now x is 2, we'll go over every y. And this will loop over every x, y coordinate in the image. So first we want to get the pixel at x, y. And that is simply image.getPixel x, y. Then we want to modify that pixel according to the function. So we'll say var new pixel equals um, grayscale the given pixel. And we will write this grayscale function later. And now we just want to update the image at x, y with this new pixel. So image.setRed of x, y to be the red value of the new pixel. That's going to be the new pixel at index red. You can see, oh, we haven't set those up yet. So let's do that. We want constants for the pixel indices. Red is the first index, so that's going to be 0. Green is the middle, it's going to be 1. And blue is the last index, it's going to be 2. So pixel new pixel red is the new red value. We want to set green to the new green value, which is new pixel of green. And we want to set blue x, y to the new pixel's blue value. Great. This is modifying the pixel, and this is updating it. So that is our image filter. And if grayscale works, then this whole thing would work. I've actually already set up grayscale down here, but right now it's empty. So let's see what happens if we just do this. So right now we just get the image, nothing happens. What we need to do is write this grayscale function. So given a pixel, I want to give this pixel the appropriate gray value. And the way you do this is you simply take the average of r, g, and b of the pixel. So if we take the average r plus g plus b over 3 and set every index to be this new value, we will have the appropriate grayness of that pixel. So let's get the red. That's going to be the pixel at index red. Green is going to be at index green. Blue is going to be at index blue. And now we want to take the average. So average is equal to red plus green plus blue over 3. And now I want to update each of these each of these channels to be this average. So pixel of red is equal to average. Pixel of green is equal to average. And pixel of blue is equal to average. And we'll return this pixel. So if we do this. There we go, we see that we grayscaled the image. And it was as easy as that. All we had to do, this was the hard part right here, was just you know, figuring out how exactly we wanted to modify that pixel. So that is the grayscale filter. So here again, we have our standard format. We have added an image to the screen, and we're calling brighten filter on the image. Loop over every pixel, get the current one, modify it, and update the image with the new modified pixel. The tricky part is writing the brighten function that takes a pixel and returns the same pixel array brightened. So like we saw in the slides, all we need to do is add the same value to each of these channels. We'll add a brightening factor to R, add the same brightening factor to G, and add the same brightening factor to B. So here we've set the brightening factor to be 50. And remember, pixel values cannot go above 255, so we'll have to cap it at the max pixel value. So to brighten this image, all I have to do is write this function that brightens a pixel. So let's get the colors from the pixel. Red 
is at index red. Green is at index green. And blue is at pixel index blue. Great. Now to brighten these, I'm going to say new red is equal to red plus the brightening factor. Same thing for green and blue. So new green is green plus the brightening factor. And new blue is blue plus the brightening factor. Now the problem is, say we had red of 255 and we just added 50 to it. Now it's gone way over 255. So we need to cap all of these new values at 255. So new red is equal to the minimum of itself and 255, which is the max, what is it, the max pixel value. Same thing for green and blue. New blue equals math.min, new blue, the max pixel value. Now we just need to update this pixel with the new values. So pixel of red is equal to new red, pixel of green is equal to new green, and pixel of blue is equal to new blue. Let's return that pixel. So if we do this, there we go, the image got brighter. And what's really cool is say we don't want to brighten the entire image, we only want to brighten part of it. What we can do is modify which pixels we actually apply the filter to. So if we only loop over half of the X pixels, we're only going to filter the left half of the image. We're filtering from X is zero to get width over two. We're not actually going all the way to get width. We could also keep this the same and only do half the Y pixels, only do half the, yeah, half the Y coordinates. And that's gonna go from the top down to the middle. So that is how we can use web image to read pixel data and modify images. And we can write all these really cool image filters. Now it's your turn to give it a try.